Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back in on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, 30,000 subscribers uh, special. I uh, think I um, re-reached um, the 30k last week or two weeks ago, but um, finally, again a challenger appears and it seems, or it seems that Zodiac Beast, the new Zodiac Beast uh, in the OCG is, is like a, a stamp, it's like a huge, huge deck in the OCG, a huge uh, uh, archetype slash uh, engine you can splash into a lot of decks. So they perfectly like uh, fitted the criteria to um, have this uh, new deck fit in or appear in these uh, challenger uh, series. But um, this is like a pure build featuring Exodius as well. I'm a huge fan of Exodius in this deck. The Solemn Brigade as well and uh, the one bear man. A lot of people are, are dropped it or have dropped it in the OCG but I still uh, like it. So let's hop in into the first game. <laughs> Alright, uh, first opponent, Light Swan Ruler. So again, finally against the opponent from the Curls Ban List Cup 2016. Um, has been a couple of months, so we're definitely excited to play test again against these uh, decks. So uh, our first matchup, we thought that Light Swan Rulers would be the perfect candidate to showcase the power of Zodiac Beasts. And uh, the opponent gets to start and um, I know he's at least yeah, the other deck is not playing too many back row. Uh, breakthrough skill, I believe, Needlebug's Nest and uh, Phoenix for Wing Blast if I'm not mistaken. So there was the first breakthrough skill I could follow it up with uh, more uh, Malmoret shenanigans, Zodiac Beast shenanigans, eventually go for Tiger King as well. Um, I know the Light Sworn Ruler deck does play, I believe, Triple Rainbow Karibu, so there's still a chance of him uh, having it uh, in his hand to, you know, uh, the, yeah, um, prevent run monster from the opponent uh, from attacking but I still decide to go for it uh, if he doesn't have it I still have the game in the back and he doesn't so GG Uh, next opponent is uh, Chronomelly Artifact. We knew this was going to be a risk, you know, uh, because Zodiac Beast uh, do uh, suffer. Well, they have, a, they have a lot of difficulties playing against a heavy back row deck. And uh, Chronomelly Artifact, well, yeah, because of uh, Sanctum and uh, Moral Tech, Initial Moral Tech, you know, interrupt any of your opponent's plays. So we knew we were taking a risk if we would uh, play, at least, yeah, we would let uh, Zodiac Beast play against Artifacts. But, um, yeah, that it would have been, or that, that it could have been like a 2 match video but uh, why not this is definitely one of the or was definitely one of the better decks in the cup so let's uh, try it out uh, eventually use emptiness as well to prevent a moral deck from coming out the beagle deck is not a threat since I can use my shenanigans loops uh, featuring Molnoret, uh, bullhorn and so on and uh, the fact that you can reuse everything thanks to exodius and the themed pot of Everest of your zodiac beast is just it's ridiculous and uh, eventually a lot of back row is lured out and he's eventually forced to use a torrential tribute as well. No follow up plays but my advantage is that I, I, that I do have two zodiac beasts in my hand to again restart my engine or at least get the transia on my side of the field. I'm forced to bottomless my opponent's uh, disc, definitely one of the better cards he could have in this situation but immediately banish it uh, and of course prevent it from hitting, uh, hitting the grave and of course uh, prevent him from using his crystal skull is of course very important. Um, the opponent still has one back row but why not I can go for the loop and I, I think I drew my red earlier yeah what are the chances? I, I think I said one, yeah indeed, one red back from my grave back to the deck. So two reds in the deck and of course I draw one of those. Um, it's not a, too big of a deal but you know it could have been like a strike to pretty much yeah, seal the uh, deal. Draw into a very tempting uh, twin twister to yeah maybe pop my opponent's back rows but I don't want to take the risk. You know not hitting the well, sanctum he will probably would have already activated but the dead moral tech, beagle tech, you know uh, the ignition maybe. Um, 
I make a minor mistake, probably should have attached one Viper to the in defense position. Uh, Drancia, just in case, you never know. But uh, in the end, it's not going to matter. He draws a useless heavy storm, and in the end, face uses Drancia to clear the way and attack for a game. GG, well played. Next opponent, one of my favorite decks from the previous uh, Cross Banners Cup 2016, which is Tango Plant. Um, can be deadly against this deck since, uh, yeah, due to the hand traps, of course, Maxi, for example, and Valor as well. But, um, yeah, also because of the, the warning, the, 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 the Solemn Brigade. But I get to start, have the sixth card, you know how the rule is of playing with, or at least opening with six, so you know that, uh, yeah, the change from a couple of years ago of opening with only five cards. If uh, we are playing with at least one deck that's from back, uh, yeah, that, that dates before the rule, we are using the, the old rule of opening with uh, six cards. And yeah, six cards and not uh, five. But this is a crucial, at least a very big opening on my part, uh, ending with. Uh, Titanic Galaxy, Trancia, Bearman on my side of the field, and this should be enough for a game. Attack with everything, and uh, yeah, it's just the Zodiac Beast engine is so, so deadly if you can pair it up with uh, Bearman into 38. Legendary Six Samurai, once back in 2011 I think this deck was uh, one of the most broken decks, well it, because of course it featured one of the, the most OP spells in this game which is Gateway, well at least back in the day, the card might be power creeped due to all the new cards, but still the Gateway is like a card that can abuse uh, as uh, yeah, a whole Samurai engine, infinite loops, it promotes infinite loops. Um, so that's why it's still uh, banned in the TCG, but I believe a 3 in the OCG, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, he gets a decent start, he gets a, a decent start but no Xian, so that could be good. Um, thanks to Northern Northern, so busted in this deck. Uh, freely uh, reborn one of your rats and instantly get your engine going, since that's how Zodiac Beasts work, you only need one monster. <laughs> for whatever reason, you only need one monster to overlay uh, to use an, as an XC material. And now I can just get insane advantage, get rid of his field, uh, also get rid of his gateway and still have my Drancia on my side of the field and also a dimensional uh, barrier on my side of the field, which is MVP against the synchro based deck. So this is more than GG. Alright, uh, next opponent, Infernities, uh, pretty much is a synchro version and I get to start. So I have the advantage, kind of crucial in this matchup. You know both decks definitely rely on the first turn opening of establishing a big board, well, in, in case of Infernities, to like set up their engine and uh, probably uh, go off next turn with uh, Trishula as well, since Trishula is in the Infernity decklist, as you probably already know. Again, the first turn uh, combination, which is ridiculously easy to get on board with uh, Titanic Galaxy, Trancia, the Bear Man. The useless Bearman beat stick, but in this case again, the the clutch dimension uh, dimensional barrier preventing my opponent from going for the synchro summon. Um, it's it's just so so good. I, I wasn't threatened by the one for one, uh, since again no tumor and top of that is not able to go for a synchro summon during his turn. So again, no threat, so no reason to use Titanic Galaxy. 
just in case you know a possible uh, answer. So just keep uh, an, an yeah, unused uh, Titanic Galaxy on my side of the field. Uh, you never uh, know. But this field is just too good. The Drancia again to interrupt any play. So GG. Alright, next matchup Clownblade. We decided to pick Clownblade for the fifth matchup since you know Clownblade was this year's winner of the Cross Balanced Cup 2016, so why not? Um, definitely a huge, huge contender, and he decides to start, he gets to start, and that kind of blows since you know Clownblade does have a big uh, advantage, especially over this deck uh, of going for the first turn, Infinity or maybe Shockmaster if you have the option, but mainly because of the back row and hand traps. You know, the Clownblade is, I think. I think the only deck playing Ghost Ogres in the main deck and also double Veiler, 2 or 3 Veiler and I think 2 Ghost Ogre as well. And those cards are excellent against uh, against Zodiac Beast and uh, he was able to end like with a nice Field of Infinity and one uh, Breakthrough skill I believe. But uh, I do have an Instant Fusion ready but you know the Cyber Dragon Infinity didn't negate, it, it, it didn't negate last turn so he probably would have negated the Instant Fusion and not only plan to survive was using the Strike on Infinity but... I can't, so that's a game over. Well, if it would have been one deck to like uh, uh, deal with the Zodiac Beast, it would have been Clown Blade or maybe like a deck uh, or yeah, in, in a matchup with uh, a bad hand or like uh, an OTK maybe. But uh, yeah, still Zodiac Beast currently are like one of the best decks, uh, super good deck in the OCG and. Um, it's just a crazy, crazy deck. Um, okay, guys, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for the 30k, and uh, on to the next uh, sub-special. Uh, thanks for watching, and feel free to leave a comment or a like if you enjoyed the video. Peace.